Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery, and this will be part two of uh, 303. And the title of today's lesson is Way Station Earth. Scripture indicates Earth is a transit point for groups of spirit beings who interacted with Elohim in eternity. Some had an intimate relationship with him, and some had an adversarial relationship with him. We're going to take a look at some examples. Romans 8, 29-30 For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate, conform to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. Whom he justified, them he also glorified. So what we find here is a reference to a certain group. They had a specific relationship with the Father. Now, what is the timing of this relationship? Turn to Ephesians. First chapter, verse 4. According as he hath chosen us, <clears throat> referring to the same group that he's speaking about, Romans 8, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So the timing on this takes place in eternity before the earth came into being. Now, Scripture teaches Adamic man, the human race, the race in which we participate in life here on the earth, the human race was created after the restoration of the earth. So we find the group we're referring to at its existence before the creation of the earth. The Adamic race had its inception after the creation of the earth. We're going to take a look at Genesis, the first chapter, verse 2. Just as we're turning. Yes. Since we know that angelic beings, one presumes to one degree or another, have the ability to see somewhat into the future, mm -hmm. do you believe that the Father allowed or disallowed them to see their downfall if they were part of the Luciferian fallen group. You wouldn't have understood it. They wouldn't have necessarily they wouldn't, blocked it. They just wouldn't no, know what no, it meant. No, it went beyond them. Hmm. Interesting. Genesis, the first chapter, verse 2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. So we find earth is the crucible through which we are tracing the activities of these groups. The first group initially had a relationship with the Father before the creation of the earth. Here we see the earth is destroyed. Drop down to verse 26, same chapter.
And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So we find <clears throat> the, the human race, Adamic man, in the word here, let us make Adam, comes into being as the last of the recreation, the restoration of a ruined creation. So you're looking at two separate groups from a biblical perspective. The biblical perspective gives us the weighing of creation, events in creation, and <clears throat> events taking place as a, dis as a distinct outcome of the destruction of the creation. So that we should understand that the new earth, Genesis 3 onwards, is created after the restoration. Yes. Okay. Yes. Human race is created after the restoration. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He makes the animals, he makes everything else prior to the creation of Adam. Yes. Sorry to ask this, but I have to because it crossed my mind. Mr. Jones, no built the ark. He put two of every being alive in the ark. Okay, but um, we have, I think now we have more beings than there could be in the ark. Sure. Yeah. So what happened? Well, what they, call they, they appropriated. But what, what I'm saying is more species of beings. No. Okay, so elk, deer, uh, reindeer, spiders, uh, ants. Every, every, he, he put two of each one in the ark. <laughs> yep. Okay. Actually, he put seven of clean species and uh, seven unclean in groupings. And then just let them go and they. Okay, so we there. have a. There, there, there's the tiger, uh, some kind of tiger wolf or something like this. It, there was tiger. There was only one left known to, on Earth, and then it died away. So now we're calling an extinct being. So he put two of those in, or more of those. And the thing is, to see, we we've gone we've gone where we can't find any more of them on the surface. It doesn't mean they don't exist because they probably exist in, in the interior. Sure. sure. However, um, okay. So it sounds like zillions of animals were in the ark. I mean, you can you can do it with the way we, we do it now, you know, with the, the mitochondrial, you know, essence of a, of a being in a, in a test tube. So we, we have, you know, all these animals in test tubes in vast warehouses of sustaining the, the, the frozen embryos and things, what have you. Well, I think you're imagining it now, the way the animals would respond and react, but back then it was radically different. You didn't really need that much space because man had control. It says that the animals came to Noah and he would just assign the space for them. That's where they would remain and uh, <coughs> flourish until they were released to go back into uh, the yard. It said that the whole human race a billion people exist today you could fit in the state of Texas. Mm. So space is not really a problem. But the problem, as you're imagining it, is the nature of the animals today. They're wild, they're unbridled, and they roam and they, they're not controlled. But in that time, everything was harmonious. Yes. Yes. You tell an animal, go and you stay right there, you go and you stay there. Like a cat. Yeah, or a sure. Dog. Yeah. But let's go on. <coughs> Scripture indicates, after creating man, God remained and fellowshiped with them. Genesis 1, we're going to read verses 29 to 31. We say God here, we're talking about the person of the pre-incarnate, Jesus Christ. God said, Behold, I have given you 
every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth in every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat and to every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air and to every thing that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life I have given every green herb for meat and it was so God saw everything he had made and behold it was very good even in the morning with six day. So the Lord makes a creation and he stays with the creation. Whether it's Prototokos, before the foundation of the earth, he remained with them, they surrounded him, or the human race in the habitations of it on the environmental state of earth, he re creates it, he stays with them. I'm reminded of the uh, Leviathan, where they play, and the, the intimation is that they are I shouldn't perhaps use the word pets, but something moving yeah. in that direction. Yeah. That yeah. Yes. So when we see Elohim carrying the lamb, I understand what the lamb uh, uh, represents, but when we see him carrying the lamb, you could look at an Adam under his arm. Yes. In a, a very you know, similar yes. Uh, yes. aspect. Yes, well there's a loving uh, connection here that you have. Uh, but we're going to see uh, some more scripture to give you a greater picture of this. Turn to Psalms 139, verse Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How does David know about the book? It's only one way. David never went to heaven. He saw the book at the time he was created. At the time he was created. And he's fellowshipping with his creator. And the creator is showing him things out of the book. And we see this intimately going on. Let's see some more scripture to get, add a conviction to this principle. Turn to Jeremiah, the first chapter, verse 4 to 5. Then the word of the Lord, the Logos of the, of the Lord, so this is Elohim. Word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. The word knew there comes from a word which means intimate relationship. It's for used in terms of uh, sexual intercourse between a man and a woman. It's talking about intimacy. Yes. So it's not the same as foreknow? As in Romans? No. Yeah, it's a different word. Yeah. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. We had a relationship. And before I came forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So we find here a uh, a um, Great, greater uh, 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 proving of <clears throat> the relationship that people have in the physical realm is a continuation of relationship they had in the spiritual realm. But should we understand here that whilst the knowing between he and Jeremiah were intimate, 
they couldn't have been as intimate as being a star in his right hand. Now we're going to go into that. We're going to go into that. I understand that. <laughs> I can see the wheels turning yeah. here. We're going to address that okay. also. <laughs> we're establishing something here that right. there's a connection. People aren't born willy nilly. God has a plan for his people. And whatever group you belong to here, you are part of a group there. Mm. Turn to the Gospel of John. Gospel of John, 8th chapter, verse 56. Further showing the intimate relationship that was had and is had when a person trans, uh, translate, translated back into uh, eternity after they died. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. What does this happen? This happened in eternity. Okay. All right. Yeah. I was just. <laughs> so he has he has a relationship with the Lord in eternity. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's the same as to whom he did for now. No. 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 <clears throat> Abraham is human of the Adamic race. So he's got an earthly relationship. In eternity, he had an earthly relationship in temporality. This is talking about when he died and went back into eternity. The Lord gave him an understanding and he went back into this intimate relationship that he had with him about what he was going to do in time. He's going to come, sacrifice his life, and achieve a particular purpose. He related that information to Abraham because of their relationship. Right. And he tells the scribes and the Pharisees, your father Abraham rejoiced when he saw my day. The word my day is my time. He says when he finally saw it, because when Jesus entered into uh, incarnation, into the earth, it was observed from the heavens, it was observed from the earth. Mm. They could see. And he said Abraham was rejoicing because Abraham knew this was the time he had been given prior to this right. from the book of everything that David saw, Abraham saw, all of them saw in eternity. So you should understand that every, um, every character that we see in the Old Testament who has a relationship with Elohim, um, I'm going to go as far as YHVH, are continuing a relationship they had in the spiritual realm. Yes. Is that also true of the Tares and their father, Lucifer? Yes. So then, when they talk nonsense to Jesus, they're born of Abraham, they're not this, they're not that, they're just lying. Certainly. All right. But they have no memory. Okay. Just like the righteous have no memory. Okay. Just like his brethren have no memory. Right. Let's go on. <coughs> So we see um, uh, the word my day comes from a Greek term himura, which means time. Abraham had an intimate relationship with Elohim in the paradise region where the human race dwells. Now turn to Matthew 17. We're going to read verses 1 to 3. question pertaining to Abraham's bosom. Yes. Can we give it to you right now? Sure. Okay, Mr. Jones. We know that um, when the Old Testament greats died, they went to where their, they were gathered to their people, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And that was Abraham's bosom, mm -hmm. okay? We also know that Abraham's bosom is called paradise. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the Abraham's bosom kind of makes sense to me in that his progeny 
are all coming back to where he's at and they designated that area Abraham's bosom. So mm -hmm. is it because they came from him? Is, is the reason that it's called Abraham's bosom? And then how did it go from Abraham's bosom to paradise? I want to understand the transition. Of turn to, uh, we're going to come back to Matthew 17. Turn to Genesis 1, 26. Make it, no, make it uh, 27. So God created man, his own image, in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. God blessed them, God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Now drop down to verse 20. Nine. God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree in the which of the, is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for me. That's Abraham's bosom. That's the paradise where man was created. Everything you read about the Adamic race, that's where they dwelt. When Jesus died, Took the thief on the on the on the cross. That's where he took him. There's only one spot. That's where the human race dwells. Is that where the human race was created? Yes. Yes. Yeah, only one place. Okay. That's where you come from. That's where you return. Turn to Luke 16. Verse 22 down to verse 26. Came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torment, and see of Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. He cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. And Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, likewise Lazarus evil things, and now he is comforted, thou art tormented. Where is he comforted? Abraham's bosom. What? Okay. So we see are we talking about the whole entire human race was created in Abraham's bosom? Yes. David including? Yes. Okay, so in the lowest parts of the earth, my, it was not hid from me. Yes. My, my parts were not hid from me in, in the secret places of the Most High. So that's Abraham's bosom? That's Abraham's bosom. Okay, all right. Now, only one place yeah. where the human race dwells. And then notice what he goes on to say, verse 26. Beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither they pass to us that would come from hence. It's one place. It's vast. But it's eternal. It's eternal, but it's separate from this that we're in. Certainly, because what we're in is not eternal. Mm -hmm. We're corrupted temporal. There's a gulf, we just read it, yeah. separates where we are from where they are. You can't pass across. Everything on this side is condemned, is corrupted, is in a state of condemnation. This is a death 
zone. On the other side is life eternal. And mm -hmm. that's where every righteous soul that passed from the darkness region, they were carried from the darkness region by angels over into the paradise region. Should we understand that since, it's, since Abraham's bosom is eternity, that every generation of Adamic man, in the spiritual sense of course, live at the same time? That every, that every generation of Adamic man in the spiritual uh, uh, realm mm -hmm. are alive and live at the same time? Yes. Hmm. Well, what happens, they were created in Abraham's bosom. Right. They incarnate, they go into the darkness region, the physical. Mm. They die if they're righteous, they go back to Abraham's bosom. Okay. So not. everything human is in that one gotcha. region. Right. From beginning to end. Yes. Yes. So, to whom he did foreknow, that group, in Romans 8, mm -hmm. before Abraham's bosom was even created? <laughs> sure. We said it. Before the foundation yeah, of the earth, exactly. well, the earth got ruined. Together, yeah. He recreate, he restored the <clears throat> earth. Yeah. Then he creates Abraham's bosom, right. which is in eternity. He looked at everything he made, and it was good. That's the history of it, but it has nothing to do with the prototokens. Mm. <laughs> the only thing to do with prototokens is that we incarnate into this thing. Yeah. Right. So one, so essentially from a, the Adamic point of view only, I'm not talking about the tokens. So essentially, one by one, they are brought into the physical realm to be tested. Yes. And they're either righteous or they're not righteous. And that's it. That's There's that's nothing it. more to that's it. it. That's yeah. it. They have a job to do. They had an, we're talking about an Adamic <coughs> race here. Yeah. They had a relationship with him in eternity. Remember what he told Jeremiah? He says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, we had a relationship. I now ordain you a prophet unto the nation. Everybody has a, whether prototokens or a damn you come here, you have a job to do, mm. a calling. Because whether you are prototokens or a damn you had an eternal relationship with him. Mm. There's a connection, eternal connection. But let's go on. Continue. Matthew 17, verse 1 to 3. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, bringeth them up into an high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Moses, Elias, all of them had a relationship with him in eternity. They lived, they died, they went back, they still established that relationship. Now you get a better, uh, even a better view of it, turn to Luke, the ninth chapter, verse 28 to 31. It came to pass about an, about an eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and John and James and went into a mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and glistening. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias. They're talking to him, conversing. What are they conversing about? <clears throat> which were Moses and Elias, who appeared in glory and spake of his decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. <clears throat> they understood the fullness of his coming 
sacrifice. They're discussing it with him. How do they know? He showed them in the book. Remember what David said. In the book all things were written. Apart from these two examples that you've shown us, <clears throat> should we understand that, because it sounds like it to me, that any time that Jesus wanted, he could enter the spiritual region and commune and fellowship with them? No. Mm. No. Because his ministry wasn't to do that. His ministry was to totally devote himself to, to preparing the living to make that decision. Israel, you're going to receive him as Messiah or you're going to reject him? And to prepare for, not them, you, Prototokos. Abraham and Elijah. Moses and Elijah. Moses and Elijah. Okay, so now. How do they, knowing what they just now have been told, go back to sacrificing animals? They don't. They don't. Okay. No so because their time on earth is done. Sure. Mm. Okay. They're in eternity. They're, they're in, it says that they've got the glorified uh, persona about them. It's not the glory, the glory of the prototokes, but it is the okay. glory of the yeah. righteous. Yeah, I, you know, Mr. Jones, you know the Bible way better than I do. But just to try to to know all these things. Yeah, so much. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> sure. Definitely. You know, we try and trip you up every now and then. Well, it's, you know, uh, I know somebody that records this stuff, so I call him up and. He gives me all the details. And then <laughs> get, I get asked any questions. Get the low down. <laughs> yeah, so they were intimate. They had an intimate, unbroken relationship. Mm -hmm. Established in life, reestablished in life, continuing in eternity. The same way we do. We don't have time to waste because we had a relationship with them in eternity. We cultivate that relationship with them here because it's preparing us for what we're called to do in eternity. Just as what they were called to do in eternity prepared them. Let's go on. <clears throat> now, Scripture teaches they understood that as glorious as their relationship was, there was another group which had a far more glorious relationship than they. John, third chapter, verse 25 to 31. We close them with this. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. They came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizeth, and all men come to him. Then answered and said, John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except to be given him from heaven. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said I am not the Christ, but I am sent before him. He that hath the bride, now the word hath there, comes from a Greek term, echo, which means has, holds, keeps. So he's saying he that has, <coughs> holds, and keeps the bride is the bridegroom. And the friend of the bridegroom, referring to himself, which standeth and heareth him rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. Thus my joy therefore is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. He that cometh from above heaven is above all. He that is of earth is earthly. 
and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. So what he's saying, he's comparing, he understands. They understood that their relationship with Elohim could never go beyond the earth. They understood because he told them that there was a group that were from the heavens that he had a relationship. Just like when he was on earth, he said, I of the sheep, have I not of this fold? <clears throat> well, if he's telling them here on earth, you can imagine how intimate he would tell them in eternity. And that this other group he spoke of. John's the first one, first one to determine the, the, the coins the term bride. Is it possible for a person to be a member of the bride but not protagonist? No. So it has to be a protagonist. No, member. no. <laughs> Can't. Uh, John is speaking about heaven and earth. He says he is of the earth, speak of the things of the earth. He is of heaven, speaks of things that are beyond the things of earth. He's talking about the existence of the bride, its relationship to the bridegroom, and how he and those of earth are outside of it. He can only be the friend of the bride. He can never become part of the bride. Is it possible for the Adamic friend, the temporal saint, in other words, mm. to love the Lord more than the Protodicus saint? No. No. <laughs> oh. I'm imagining the look on your face. No. <laughs> Remember what Jesus said about John. He said, of all men, born of women, is never risen a greater than John the Baptist. But he who is least in the kingdom, that's Prototokos, is greater than he. Amen. Jesus talks about the relationship. John talks about the relationship. The only ones that don't understand the relationship are the human beings. They don't have time to read the scripture and study for themselves and prepare themselves. Because every single person has a place in the scriptures. Having said that, we'll go on next time to talk about those that have an adversarial relationship in eternity, how they fit in, and how the Lord leads to try to pursue this a little further in righteous relationship from an eternal perspective to a temporal perspective.